Okay, you guys. So, we are... Okay, guys. So, we're going to go into the second phase of this dismissive attachment style. The emotional, unavailable person or partner. Okay? So... In the first video we did, we talked about what it looks like, what is it, and the type of people that dismissive attachment style attracts, okay? And so we know that a lot of the times, and, and I want to say this, that understand, the, understand this, when it comes to the anxious, preoccupied attachment style person, like I did in the other video, Understand that the reason why some people carry the type of attachment style is because of the inconsistency in nurturing that they had from birth, okay? So when you have an inconsistency of not being nurtured consistently and, and effectively, then of course it's going to make you up and down to where your emotions will be all over the place. You don't know whether you're coming or going and you will. And then when you take that into your relationships as adult, you will begin to put your partners on the pedestal and do everything possible to um, hold on to them. And if you have any threat or fear of them leaving, then you'll do whatever it takes to keep them around. So the pre, the anxious preoccupied attachment style comes from the inconsistency of being, of not being nurtured as a baby consistently. Okay, the the dismissive attachment style comes from not having no type of being nurtured at all okay now a lot of times with the root with this dismissive attachment style what happens is that when they're little boy or girl man or woman when they're little okay their parents or it can be one parent or it can be both parents but their parents has completely not giving them no type of nurturing okay so a lot of times as babies when you have a parent or both parents where you're not getting no type of nurture nurturing you're not getting any type of emotional stability or security any of that then what happens is is that you begin to shut your emotions off why because you feel like if I show any emotions, it's not like I'm going to get any attention. It's not like I'm going to get the support and the nurturing and the love that I need. So what happens is with these type of men and women, from a young age, either one parent or both parents completely dismissed that child to where they didn't get any of the emotional, um, they didn't get any of the emotional nurturing in no way, shape, or form, okay? Or... This is another thing with the dismissive attachment style, okay? Or it could have been that the person that carried this attachment style, they were in a bad, bad, traumatic relationship or relationships. And what happened was is that they could have been a person where they were very um, open to their emotions, but they got in a relationship or some relationships and they got really damaged and hurt. And what happened is that they just eventually shut down emotionally. And so they stopped themselves from feeling any type of emotions to the point where they came emotionally unavailable for themselves and for people. And that's where this type of attachment style comes from, okay? So I want y'all to understand when you're dealing with, when we dealing with this dismissive attachment style, a person that carry it or people that carry it, understand that, you know, or you're dealing with somebody like this, understand that when that person is emotionally unavailable for you or they dismissive towards you or, you know, they just always talking about your flaw, everything, okay, or they're judgmental, understand that sometimes you got to step back and not take it personal, okay? Because the thing is, is that if you take it personal, you're on you're only going to continue to like make yourself crazy. So you got to understand with these type of people, sometimes you got to step back out of your own body and say, okay, let me not take this personal because 
this I know at the end of the day it's a deeper root to why this person is always talking about my flaws is why they always dismissing me why they're so emotionally unavailable to me you know what I'm saying so for the first thing is don't take it so personal when if you're gonna be with this type of person you're gonna have to really really learn not to take that stuff personal okay now I'm not saying to stay with somebody that has this dismissive attachment style because at the end of the day, I always say that you can't heal anybody, but you also got to understand that you got to love yourself more enough to say that if my emotional needs is not getting met by this person, you also have to be willing to walk away for your own sanity, for your own peace of mind, for your own love, for your own joy. You get what I'm saying? So, I'm not saying stay with somebody like this, but what I'm saying is, is that if you know you're, if you know you're with somebody that's not willing to even meet you halfway to do better in no way, shape, or form, you might have to consider walking away because I'm telling you, in the end, if you stay with somebody like this, it's not even willing to meet you halfway to do better and to change. I promise you, all it's going to do is tear you down mentally. All it's going to do is tear you down emotionally. All it's going to do is make you miserable and happy to where your self-esteem and your self-confidence is so low. Where you feel like you have no other option and you stuck. And that's not the place you want to be. But if you're with somebody that does have this dismissive attachment style and they genuinely want to do better. You know what I'm saying? Then it is certain things that they can do. You know what I'm saying? To, to meet you halfway. To let you know that they do want to do better and the first thing is is that when you're dealing with somebody so understand this video right here this is not for the people that has this dismissive attachment style and feel like shit i ain't got to change i'm gonna keep on doing me then that's fine i respect that 100 percent, 1000 percent. but this is not for you this is for people that has this attachment style that wants to genuine genuinely do better you know what I'm saying? For themselves so that their relationships around them can grow healthier, okay? So the one thing is is that if you have this type of attachment style, okay, and you have this dismissive attachment style, first thing is you got to step back and you got to try to figure out why do I keep attracting these type of men or women that has this anxious attachment style why do i keep attracting these people that are so overly emotional to where it just it, it overwhelms me why do i keep attracting these type of people okay so you first gotta ask yourself one question why do i keep attracting these type of people okay and when you can sit back and understand why you keep attracting these type of people then you can begin to kind of break down other roots of why you are the way you are. And another thing you want to do, if you really want to genuinely change, if you with a partner in a relationship and you have this dismissive attachment, right? If your partner is expressing her feelings or his feelings and they really, really being vulnerable with you, then don't just tell your partner, look, come on, suck it up. You know, it'll be all right. No, you have to figure out how to genu genuinely find some compassion within you to give to your partner because you got to understand if you're if you're genuinely wanting to change this type of attachment style you genuinely have to find some compassion within you you have to learn how to be compassionate with yourself to be compassionate with your partner okay and i say this in every video you cannot give love to someone else until you can learn how to give it to yourself you cannot give compassion to someone else until you can learn how to give that to yourself okay so you genuinely have to find compassion for yourself to give it to your partner, okay? When they're expressing their feelings or they're expressing whatever they need to express to you. Another thing is that you have to be willing to um, understand that if you can really trust your partner and you really feel safe with them, take small tiny steps and just letting down your guard a little bit. And expressing to them certain things that you never told them. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying major things at first. I'm saying small little things that you never told them. Take your time and express certain things to them. You know, like let them in slowly, little by little, so that they can see and feel that connection with you. You get what I'm saying? Because you having this dismissive attachment style and you're with a partner 
man or woman, they're going to want to feel that connection with you. Okay? So just take your time and slowly let them in a little bit. Okay? Tell them things that you never told them. Another thing is get rid of the, the lies, you know, get rid of the secrets. Stop. And that's another thing with this person that has this dismissive attachment style. They are very secretive. OK, so if you meeting somebody and they real, real secretive and you just notice that they they so secretive to where you can't even get a, 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 a baby toe in the door with them. That's another form of this attachment style. They are so, so secretive. And the reason why a lot of times they are secretive, low key, they ain't gonna tell y'all, but low key, they do fear rejection. They fear rejection too. They fear that a lot of people may know a lot of the shit that they've been through, they won't be accepted. So when you're dealing with this person with this type of attachment style, pay attention because they are very, very secretive and you can feel it. Okay? So if you're willing to change this type of attachment style, cut the secrets. You know what I'm saying? Don't be so secretive. Stop lying. Stop keeping sad chicks on the side. You know, stop keeping the sad dudes on the sidelines. You know, eliminate the extra people out of your relationship so that y'all can have a healthy relationship and genuinely work on making it more healthier, not just for you, but for the both of y'all, you know? And that's another way. Just eliminate the secrets. Eliminate the, the sec being so secretive. Eliminate the sad chicks and the sad dudes. Okay, another form you can do if you want to change this type of attachment style is that um, <clears throat> you can begin to just um, emotionally, emotionally go back to those old wounds and those old traumas of where you've been hurt. This is my thing and this is the root of it all. I'm being honest. You cannot heal from this attachment style until you're willing to get to the root of why you are the way you are. So sometimes you're going to have to go back and revisit how you was treated like a child. Sometimes you're going to have to go back and revisit those traumas that you didn't want to have to face. You cannot heal until you get to the root cause of it. You get what I'm saying? You cannot heal effectively until you know the root of why you are the way you are and why you have this attachment style. So sometimes you're going to have to get to the root to go back to those traumas in order to really effectively heal. And if that means you got to take a season by yourself to be single to heal because it was so much trauma back there, then take your season. But that's the only way you're going to do it if you go back and revisit those places that most traumatized you. And when you visit those places that most traumatized you, and you take the time to really allow God to really internally heal you from all of those, that pain and trauma, then you can begin now to take steps into changing that attachment style so you're no longer emotionally unavailable. And that was just my second video. I love you guys. You be blessed.